Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to Ham Cured Smoke and the 18th installment of the IC7300 from A to Z series. This will be a continuation of spectrum scope operation with part two today. I'm going to apologize in advance that this video is pretty long. There are just a lot of pieces to cover, and I didn't want to split this topic into too many separate videos. If you're just interested in one topic and don't want to watch the whole thing, I've put an index on the screen that gives you the time index for most of the topics. There's a lot to cover, so let's get to it. So one other really neat feature about the scope on the 7300, and you saw me accidentally activating this a couple of times, is the touchscreen function, which is if you touch anywhere on the waterfall, it will zoom in on that section, and then if you touch again, it will tune to wherever you touch on the scope. So if I see a signal here and I touch, let's try again. Uh, there's one. You don't always hit it exactly. Right? Like, so there's somebody tuning up, apparently. And I'm going to bet that this is probably FT8 data down here. Again, I'm not always that great at touching exactly where I need to be, but it does get you pretty close. And bear in mind, I'm off to the side of the screen here as I'm recording this, so it's a little trickier than if you're looking uh, straight on. But you get the idea. Now this is one of the places where actually if I slow the speed down the zoom actually might be more useful because then sometimes you get the little peaks and when it's going too fast you miss the peak. But you get the idea. Anywhere you touch it zooms in and then you touch again within the zoomed window and it tunes you right to that frequency. So that, I think, is one of the cooler features of this radio, especially if the band conditions aren't great and there's only a few signals on. It's a really nice way to see what's there and then instantly tune to it. So let's put this back to fast. And that is the touchscreen function. Now, one other uh, feature of the scope is the mini scope mode. And I just realized when we first started, I didn't show you how to turn the scope on, but it's the button right here in the center on the bottom that says M scope. And if you press it again, when the scope is on, it goes to mini scope mode. So it shoves everything up and it makes the scope even smaller. And then if you touch it a third time, it turns the scope off. So touch and hold and it goes back to the large scope. So single touch toggles between scope on and off and then if you press and hold it, it'll expand it to the full size scope so with the mini scope function what you can do is on the bottom half of the screen here you can use the spectrum scope combined with the audio scope or if you're in ridi you can put the ridi decoder and the ridi scope up here while the spectrum scope is on. So if we uh, find some so there's some audio. You can see the audio on the auto po audio portion. This is an audio spectrum scope which if we go to uh, and then I've actually got the spectrum scope menu here now because I'm in the audio scope. If I go back to the spectrum scope, if you have the um, span set down to around two and a half kilohertz, you'll notice that this spectrum scope looks very much like the audio spectrum scope because you're just looking at the audio filter. So, in fact, here, now that I've got it in center mode, um, you can see this is pretty similar. Not exactly the same, because this is just looking at audio, and this is a little broader than this, but you get the idea. 
So you'll notice that the scope looks a little bit different now. This is because I've changed a few settings and that's what we're going to cover next here is the settings screen. And actually I'm going to make one other change here because uh, it's evening here and uh, you can see we're on 80 meters and the band here is very noisy. There's actually some thunderstorms nearby. Nothing close enough that I'm worried yet. But I'm going to just turn my RF gain down and that'll help make hopefully some of the signals a little bit more prominent and visible so that we're not uh, looking at a scope filled with noise. Uh, and one of the things that I'm going to show you in the settings that I don't happen to care for so much on the default settings of the scope. You'll notice that when I turn this down there's a gray band there that's slowly fading away above uh, the other signals and actually we'll turn this back up again for a second and there you can see the gray in the background that stays after the signals go away. So let's take a look at that setting first. So to get to settings we're going to press set, press and hold the set button on the screen and then this brings us into the scope set menu so we'll go up to the top and I'm gonna skip the first one for a minute and we're gonna to go to max hold max hold right now you can see it's set for 10 second hold your choices are off 10 second hold and on and that refers to that gray bar that was on the back so I'm gonna turn it off and we'll see what that looks like and then now, you notice as the signals go away, they just go away. Um, if you're looking for signals and you want to see something that you might have missed and that little gray area will retain previous peaks, it might be useful, but I just don't happen to care for the look. Uh, and I find it more distracting than helpful. But you may find it different, and uh, if you like to use it, that's how you can set it. If you... Uh, let's actually go back and we will set it to on and as you might guess if you set it to on it just leaves the maximum signal level there and if I turn the RF gain all the way down as I did that background will stay at whatever the peak level was indefinitely and that one's one that I really don't understand the value of uh, but it is one of the options so we're going to turn it off and let's get a little bit of signal back here. You'll also notice that the uh, the scope is a little different in color now. We've got some purple and green there. So that's a couple other options that you can change. We'll go back into the settings screen. And again, I'm going to skip some of these other ones. So you've got uh, three choices for colors here. There's waveform color. There's waveform color for the line and then the waveform color for the max hold so this was that gray bar in the back you can go in and you can make that any color you want this is the default and as you can see when you go into the color setting screen you can actually set the RGB values independently so you can set these however you like to get you know a pretty I think it's 256 colors each so I think that's what is it four million colors or something so I'm gonna not fool with that one uh, but I'm gonna change the waveform color here and let's just make it all red so that's kind of an obvious change and then you can see the waveform this is the fill portion of the scope I guess this is actually handy that I have a lot of noise here that I can fill up the screen the fill portion is the everything under the line. So let's go back to the settings again. And then under waveform type, you can choose fill plus line, which is what I have right now. Let's just take a quick look at what it is with just the fill. So with just the fill, as you might expect, the line is gone. And then I'm going to go back to fill plus line. So now our green line is back, and then that is the third option that you have for color, is you can set the color of the line. So again, I just have it all green. But I'll show you one other look that I actually kind of like. You can go to the waveform color, and if you set the waveform color all the way to black, 
that lets you effectively turn it off. There is no choice of line only, but if I set the waveform color to black, you get basically the appearance of just a line. And I actually kind of like this look myself. Again, you're all going to probably have different preferences, and uh, everybody has different things that they like, so you can set these to a variety of different ways. So, whoops, i got to hold it. So let's go back up here and we'll start and take a look at um, some of the other choices. So scope on during transmit, and uh, there's only off and on. And basically what that does, let me, um, let me turn my power down to zero here. And let me get to a clear frequency just in case. I did get a note from one of the viewers that said even with the power at zero, the radio puts out about five watts. And I haven't actually verified that, but um, so let's just show what the scope looks like in uh, transmit mode. And I think we need to be in center. WA2IVD testing, one, two, three. So it shows your signal on the scope in transmit. And if we turn it off, as you would guess, WA2IVD testing. Uh, and actually what it does, if we show the bigger scope where you can see it, WA2IVD testing. So it just freezes the scope if you turn that setting off. Max hold we've already covered. Center type uh, center point display or center type display. This is another thing I've changed and you may or may not have noticed this when I just transmitted. Let me go back to the default which is filter center and let's find a signal here. There we go. So With this setting, you'll notice that the audio waveform is on both sides of the center. So this, the in the center mode, and actually even in the fixed mode, but it's kind of a large enough span that you really can't tell, the line for the center is centered on the filter frequency, so you're seeing the center of the audio waveform. Uh, the, whoops, I keep forgetting to hold it. So then you can go to the carrier point center, and I actually prefer this display myself. With the carrier point center, if I tune the frequency in, now you'll notice that the entire audio portion of the waveform is to the left of the line here. And that's because the line is on my carrier frequency. So when my dial is set to 3822 right now, that's the carrier frequency. This is, of course, suppressed carrier sideband, so there is no carrier. So you only see the audio. And the audio is now all the way on the left side of it. And that's because we're on lower sideband. Let me see if I can find an example here that's a little further away and maybe a little stronger signal. Uh, Dude, when you look at it, you're going to have to eat your words. So the signal is completely to the left on lower sideband. If we were on upper sideband, the audio portion would be completely to the right of it. And I kind of like that flag because it sort of tells me, and I could tune up to 20 meters um, actually, just for grins, let's take a quick look, but I don't, uh, well, there's, that must be somebody really close by. Um, let's tune him in on upper sideband. Oh, here we go. We'll get, uh, we'll get the FT8 guys, because there's always stuff on FT8. So if I go to the center, there we go. If I'm on, this is actually a very good way to look at it. So I'm on 1474, which is the frequency for FT8 on 20 meters. And you notice that all of the audio portions, the different audio waveforms are all 
above the center line because I'm on upper side band here. So we'll go back to 80 meters. And uh, actually, we'll see if we can find the FT8 stuff down here. Even though FT8 is usually the same sideband everywhere. But if I... So it should be upper sideband, but I've had to go... So my carrier frequency, everything is reversed because I'm on the wrong sideband for this. But you can see that everything is below. So hopefully that explanation is clear enough. But again, let's just go back here. So this is the carrier point is the center frequency. And then there's one more setting here, absolute frequency. And let me show you what that does. So if you notice here, I've got my carrier frequency. And on the bottom of the scope, you can see the annotations that this is just in kilohertz. Plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. And then 5 is all the way out at the end with the span I have set. If I change this setting to absolute frequency, now it'll actually show you the frequency uh, relative to the carrier frequency. So 576 is the center, and then 578, 580, and so on. So hopefully that makes those options clear. And then now here on 20 meters... There is 074, 076. So the absolute frequency mode, you can actually read your frequency. And if I increase the span, of course, now I have get further frequencies in here. So you can see instantly what the carrier frequency is for a signal if you're taking a look at it. Okay, that covers that. Now, marker position. Uh... And again, this is for the marker when you're in the fix mode, carrier point or filter center. That's the same function um, as for the center mode, except if I'm in fixed, it basically says where this marker is. Now, unless you have these spans, uh, the edges set very small, it probably doesn't matter too much because the the width of the difference between your filter center and your carrier center is pretty small if your fixed mode is the entire band. Of course, if you're now I'm only going from 0 to 100, so it, uh, let's get down here. You might be able to see the difference. So, um, again, that's the fixed position and it actually defaults to the carrier point rather than the filter center. So let's move down. This is the um, a video bandwidth, I believe, is what the V stands for. I don't. I actually have to go double check the manual myself. If I change it to wide, you notice that when I have the signals here, they're very wide. It uh, it doesn't give you as um, as narrow a uh, cross section of the signal. Uh, let's see if we there we go. So it just widens out um, basically the precision of the scope signal. And then averaging, I have it off right now, and I, this is one thing that may be good if you have a noisy band, so you can set it to be. Averaged over two, three, or four sweeps. So it just, uh, if you got a lot of static noise in that, you'll notice that these things are changing much more slowly now where you see noise there. Let me go back to 80 meters and you'll see what I mean in the difference there. If I go to fixed mode where I have a lot of noise, you notice this is changing much more slowly. So it averages it over again two three or four sweeps and that can actually help you pick out the difference between actual signals and noise uh, if we and we'll use the touch screen trick here and bring us up there so again it just moves your scope a little bit slower 
Okay, we've covered the waveform types. Now, waterfall display on or off. Now, one of the things that you'll notice if you're in expand mode, it's always on. If I make it smaller, then this turns the waterfall off and it gives you a little bit larger, um, basically, FFT display or spectrum display. And if we turn the waterfall display on, then the miniscope version will have the waterfall on, so you'll have a small waterfall there. And then waterfall speed, as you might expect. This is just how fast the waterfall goes, so you see it's much slower now. And again, if you're looking all over the place for signals and you want to maybe catch multiple signals during a contest this keeps them on the screen longer let me make this a little dimmer so you know if there was a brief signal somewhere here you'd see it staying on the screen longer again that'll be a personal preference item for you well I cut that off right in mid finger point I'm sorry about the abrupt stop but this video is already running long. Next time, we'll finish up the waterfall settings and cover how to customize the fixed edge frequencies. That should wrap up spectrum scope operation. As always, thanks for watching. If you find these videos useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.